change, we are inside the Model 3 and this is what makes it so different than every other car. As you can see, extremely minimalist design, unlike anything else on the market. And almost everything in the car is controlled through this touchscreen. So not only is the touchscreen different in that there's no buttons and I just tap to change everything in the car, but on the back end, this is a totally different system. Instead of having all these analog devices and buttons that are their own sort of separate system, you know, whether I wanna change the AC or roll the window down in a normal car, everything through Tesla runs through this central hub. And so that means that every single feature potentially in the future could be controlled by voice because it's all connected to the software interface. Right. Additionally, Tesla is the only automaker who is able to release over the air software updates to the entire fleet. That means your car actually gets better as you own it. Over time, Tesla releases new updates just like your iPhone to allow the touchscreen to do more and more things. So in fact, we, we haven't seen V10 yet, but just around the corner, Tesla's poised to set an entirely new update, allow Netflix, YouTube viewing in the car. Imagine pulling up to a supercharger and just getting your favorite show pop up instantly. I mean, this is the future and Tesla's built this platform to really get the most out of the digitally connected smart car. We estimate that today, Tesla has about 800,000 active connected Teslas on the road. That may sound small, but this connected install base and user fleet is growing rapidly. We estimate that by 2020, Tesla could have potentially 1.5 million people driving around in Teslas every month. By 2025, well over 10 million. Think about how Apple began to monetize its hardware product line as it began to reach huge scale. They introduced the App Store and let developers come in and build on top of their platform. This is exactly what Tesla is poised to do with tens of millions of users, but turn the vehicle into essentially a new smartphone as device. I mean, for instance, right now, the, the Tesla touchscreen is very simple things. I can navigate to anywhere I wanna go, which is super seamless. And it just tells me, directs me, make sure I have enough charge in terms of music. I can play a song. I can even do voice activation. Play Drake. Damn, that worked. So, although now the only thing you could do with voice is, you know, do really simple things, navigate, play a new song. The beauty of what Tesla has going here with the song. ability to do software updates is that they can expand the offerings over time. So eventually, like I said, they want to get Netflix on here. Tesla just launched Tesla Insurance. Imagine being able to purchase that through your touchscreen. I mean, there's more and more things that Tesla can layer on for you to do on their touchscreen. And each one of these things provides more value for customers and is an opportunity for them to make money. I mean, think about the numbers. It can add up really, really quickly. Just making a couple dollars per user per month when you have tens of millions of people driving around in your cars could mean hundreds hundreds of millions in annual revenue at an extremely high profit margin or even billions if they get to somewhere close to Apple's scale. So that's why this is really a game changer for Tesla's vehicles and in the long run doesn't only change how consumers interact with their cars but will change what the vehicle can do and how Tesla makes money from it. So this is really awesome. This is the HVAC or AC system in the Model 3. And this is actually a patented system that they have. And so these airwaves, are actually really fun. You can move it with your hand up or down. And so this is um, part of the reason that Elon Musk made a joke on Joe Rogan about the Tesla AC and the potential for them to get into that as a future product, start a whole rumor mill, was because of this patented airflow system, which is featured on the Model 3. So as you can see, this really innovative way that Tesla blasts cool air to you, you can choose exactly how you want it. I can make it, you know, stronger, weaker. I don't know, I think the biggest thing after playing around with this is it's just fun. Like, I can do this. This is all of the autopilot stuff. How do you want to customize it? You know, summon, navigate on autopilot. This is the feature we're about to test out. Um, start of every trip, mile. So it's really customizable. It's how you want to drive. You want to do sport, chill mode for the people who are slow, sport mode for the people who like it exciting, service. Then um, this is the this is the car we're in. Now we're gonna go. Whoop. Easter eggs. This is what is so dope about the Tesla is they program in all of these Easter eggs, which are like sort of like fun, just games, different kind of look. I'll just show you romance mode since me and Kbun are in here. Feel it, or you it's, can't see this, but it's like blowing warm air. Got romance. Mode. Oh my god, this is crazy. Oh all right, that was cool. <laughs> Fart mode, classic. <laughs> Ooh, fart on demand. So now I can go like this. 
We're on Mars. Epic Mars. So just all sorts of really fun. Ooh, look at that. And now it changed that to the starship because we're on Mars. All right. The games. This is what I think is one of the most exciting parts of the system. Tesla is basically selling you not only a car, but a $40,000 Xbox. So as you can see, they've got all these dope little old games. We're going to do this one, Beach Buggy, start that. Okay, this is dope because you can actually drive the wheel. Whoa, holy shit. Oh, oh my god. Bro, it's way harder than it looks. Ooh. There you have it, folks. This is the touchscreen that really makes Teslas, and the Model 3 in particular, so unique and stand out between every single car. There's only going to be more and more ways in which this evolves, it makes it more fun for you to actually drive the car and use it every day and easier to use, but it's also going to turn into a huge, huge business for Tesla. So I would encourage all of you, when you're in a Tesla car, when you see it, think about all of the possibilities, all of the opportunity, when in just a couple of years, we have millions of people driving around, interacting through the device and the car becomes sort of the next frontier of what the smartphone is today you know, when the iphone first came out and you could program any app onto it there was no way you would think about you know uber or twitter or all these things that have came out and turned into billion dollar companies and really changed the world built on top of that, that software platform and i think that is what tesla is setting up but i think be. the next evolution of this is to really open it up and become a marketplace for developers to come in and build everything on top of this amazing piece of hardware Hyper Change. Welcome to another episode. I'm here in a performance Tesla Model 3 in Long Island. Uh, we are testing out Autopilot and the Navigate on Autopilot feature. This is the cutting edge of self-driving technology. Um, Tesla's been rolling out more and more features, improving their self-driving software. Uh, so now it's gotten to the point where on the highway, it'll, the car is essentially driving and navigating itself. Um, you can see on the touch screen, you just saw me engage or down engage autopilot and so now you, you can see I don't even have to touch the wheel um, the car it, it's showing me where the car is gonna go um, it's noticing all the other cars around it yeah um, so you can see it sees the cars around me um, and this is really useful because this way I know what the car is thinking and what it's seeing which makes me feel a little bit more comfortable um, so you, you see I can see a car behind me it doesn't want me to change lanes and see when I turn my wheel up I'm changing that speed super easy all right, so we disengaged autopilot there. Okay, so we are back engaged in autopilot. It's not perfect, and you gotta keep in mind this is beta, like still sort of beta software, and so I'm still supposed to be paying attention. I'm still liable for what's happening, uh, but the car is doing most of the work. And I think the biggest difference here from the, the consumer experience standpoint is like, I don't feel like this aggressive, like kind of stress and like, it's a much more relaxed, calming driving experience. So I think that's the biggest thing about this self-driving software. You may say self-driving cars aren't here today. It's not something that's real, but it is actually here today and that it's moving the needle on the consumer experience today already when you have a Tesla. A huge portion of the miles driven in a Tesla are on autopilot because it makes it so much easier. So even though full self-driving isn't here, it's already moving the needle on customer happiness. And even beyond that, on the financial statements, every time Tesla rolls out a new feature, they're able to recognize more autopilot revenue and so that's what's so interesting about tesla is more and more of the car is becoming actual software of what you're buying so for instance there's the full self-driving uh, package you need to buy which is thousands of dollars extra to be able to get these features and now as tesla rolls out navigate on autopilot enhance summon and more and more of these cutting edge features you're going to see them start to recognize more and more of that software revenue increase the entire margin of the car so from a business model standpoint there's something really really exciting going on here as well and this is only on the highway now, but in the future, I actually did the demo, we can play the tape now, in California on Autonomy Day, of where this software works in the, on the roads. It's not only reading the speed limit, but it's reading stop signs, um, it, it, or like, like stop lights, when it's green, when it's red. It's also being able to figure out if there's a stop sign, stopping, letting other people go. I was in the demo version, and it literally did a left into oncoming traffic. So I'm extremely excited about where this is all headed, um, and I think 
the biggest thing to keep in mind why Tesla is so far ahead in this self-driving race is because they have customers doing the work. They have customers paying them, uh, like Keith, for instance. Thank you, Keith, for letting us drive your Model 3. Whose Model 3 this is, paid for this car. He's driving it, but at the same time, he's training Tesla's neural net to get better. So Tesla has a fleet of 700,000 cars on the road training its neural net. Think about Waymo. They're paying two software engineers $150,000 to sit in their car and drive it around. Waymo is only collecting millions of miles because of this bottleneck and their ability to actually actually get their cars on the road and get people driving them. On the flip side, Tesla is getting billions of miles, orders of magnitude more data. We all know data is the new oil. This is the secret sauce to making these self-driving algorithms actually work and making this technology a reality. And that is why to me, Tesla is the only one who has a shot right now because they have 700,000 of these cars on the road, soon to be millions, equipped with all these cameras and sensors, constantly learning, constantly improving. And so this is why I'm so excited to be able to do this episode, you know, in the car, showing you guys Guys, because this is truly the cutting edge. We are literally training this neural network as we speak to get better and better at self-driving. So now we're gonna see if we can uh, do some robo lane changes in a second here. All right, so I'm not touching it. I can see if the car... Oh, shit. I didn't hold that long enough. All right, so I'm holding down this. adjusted and bam that is it folks the robo lane change so as you can see um, I had this the speed setting to 62 we're gonna go past this Tiguan which is going a little too slow so the car recognized that um, it's not totally at the point where it's gonna change the lane itself I did just have to hold that down but it, as you can see it wasn't going when there was other cars there it waited for a spike space and just moved by itself knew it was in the other lane I let go and we've, we've done the robo lane change so I don't know if you if it looks as weird as it feels but I think this to me at least from a consumer standpoint is the first time where I feel like there's been a leap in the technology you may have seen autopilot you know you're following a car a certain distance that's one level that's but actually wheel. changing lanes in real time I mean it, it oh yeah There's a lot going on under the hood that enables Tesla to actually bring this technology to market that is super important to understand because Tesla is taking a very unique approach to self-driving tech. I call it the vertical autonomy stack. Tesla has three layers that actually enable this to happen. The first layer is this car is equipped with eight different cameras, radar sensors that are monitoring what's going on. Think about it. Every human drives with just two eyes going forward, usually distracted half the time, probably looking at their phone. This car has eight cameras that could potentially see just as good as a human eye, all looking around all at once, additionally with forward facing radar. So that is the at the hardware level, Tesla's building in these cameras and sensors into every single vehicle to be able to collect this data in the first place. The second layer of this is Tesla has to be able to run a ton of different algorithms that are processing and intaking all of this data in real time to tell the car what to do and make sense of you know what the cameras are seeing, what's happening with the radar. So to handle all of that, Tesla has actually built a chip, a computer from the ground up called their full self-driving computer. They hired a guy called Pete Bannon, a chip designer from Apple, to come in from scratch three years ago and build this autopilot hardware division team. So this is why it's such an interesting and unique vertical stack because Tesla has the car with the hardware and the sensors. They have their own computer. They are coding the software neural net algorithm they're building the software that actually runs on that computer. And the, the second thing to mention is that computer is actually optimized to run that software. And so it's layers and layers. And then the last thing, like I mentioned earlier, is you have almost a million people that are using these cars, training the neural nets, feeding the data through that system to actually get the self-driving neural net where it is. That's why this is the only company that I think is really making a push towards self-driving in the near future. Because, you know, if you're Uber, you're using someone else's cars like Ford, you're using, you know, someone else's computer like NVIDIA, it's just a piecemeal approach that I think isn't going to actually get the job done. And so this vertically integrated approach is really what's allowing Tesla to innovate and move the needle in this really, and, and potentially solve this extremely difficult technology problem of the self-driving car. When you're driving on autopilot, it's a little bit like scary, honestly. Mm. It takes some getting used to to trust the car. Yeah, no. 